FM. Okay. So, <clears throat> well, thank you for coming, Sam. Thank you for the invitation. Nice to see you and hear you. Yeah. Uh, before we get started, we, um, I don't know if we've met each other before, but you were at Solent a few years ago <laughs> now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how we got on it. Were you part of a HPA at one point? as well uh yeah oh yeah. yeah 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 so i was uh, on a scholarship like right. at the university yeah so i think we met quite times in a gym and like uh, yeah. at the yeah. university in, in person it wasn't like, yeah yeah i thought i recognized you from somewhere <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. so um so um, as I normally do with these interviews that I've done, uh, could you introduce yourself? So, I'm Jan Koza, and I'm a former Solent University student. Nowadays, uh, I'm in the Czech Republic, trying to enjoy my life. <laughs> and uh, I have more activities in sports and football. I'm a youth coach at the Czech Football Association. I work as a sport director. Uh, in a football club in my hometown. Uh, it's a small village, but we try to uh, do quality football and combine the three C's. So like the concept, competence and uh, like capital. With the first team, we promoted to a higher competition and we want to promote this year as well and the next year as well as well. So yeah, it's it's a challenge for me and along with that we focus on youth and community so we also want to improve facilities in our stadium and like um, in our academy so I enjoy this project because um, we are doing football from really the base and we try to build a community and after that I work uh, as a coordinator uh, in one project um, called Coaches in Schools, which operates in the Czech uh, educational uh, education system. And the way it works is that coaches from different uh, sports uh, go to uh, schools and lead the, the, lead the, the classes with teachers. So they really help the educational system from the point of like coaching and i also do lecturing stuff so there are more things to do at the moment yeah. so that's a very big introduction <laughs> um so before football did you do any other previous sports not really uh i played football from maybe when i was five years old but also I combine it with, with other sports, you know, like volleyball, like basketball, athletics and like swimming and other sports. But the main field of mine was football from the really young age. Yeah, because yeah. football seems to be the most popular in the Czech Republic. Yeah, the, 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 the most sports in the Czech Republic, but football is the most like popular. But there, but we are popular also because of ice hockey, you know. Uh, so it's not like a field hockey, but it's like played on on ice. So uh, we have like quite few uh, hockey players in NHL and uh, in Canada and the USA. Then we play tennis. We play other sports like summer and winter sports because there there are two like uh, two seasons winter and summer so we can play maybe all of the all of the sports so in the end why did you choose football um <laughs> i think because i love it from the first time i think uh my father took me to football and like yeah so it's maybe because of my parents 
it's maybe because of the environment I live in. And it's because I think we were really popular in football in those times. So there were players like Pavel Nedved, like Milan Baros, Vladimir Smith, uh, and those kind of players. So they maybe influence us to play football because we were really good during those times. Do you come from, do you come up from a, a sporty family, a football family? Yeah. Yeah, so my mom played basketball and my father played football. Okay. So, yeah, I think I'm from the sports family. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And um, so you're in your early career, um, your career of playing, you were a defender. So how did you get into that position? Presumably you played all different types of positions on, on the field and then you ended up as defending so what why did that happen how did that yeah i think when i was younger i was a really good striker okay. but but from that moment uh i went then like to play midfielder and then defender so i'm left footed so i can play left back as well as center back so i like those positions because you, you, you can see the whole pitch from that position. And I think that when I was older, uh, this position was really mine. So I didn't play uh, this position like when I was 10 years old or 15 years old, but uh, when I was, I think, from the age of 16 or 17, I started to play the center back or left back. And I think, this is the position I can play like really well. And it seems like it. So um, you went to school and university in the Czech Republic. You uh, went to um, Charles University. Um, why did you pick sports studies? Presumably sport was still in you. And then why, why that particular um, degree? Um, because when I started to to study at the university, I started to combine my career as a footballer with like coaching. So uh, so when when I played for, for one club, I coached there as well. So from uh, from that reason, I maybe chose uh, this kind of university like uh, the field of coaching and like physical education to maybe gain more knowledge and to because I also wanted to become a coach after my playing career but uh, but because my playing career st stopped at a really young age I needed to think about my future so then it was easier to maybe like go to the university and like combine it mainly with coaching so that's why um, yeah. and so presumably sports studies uh covers a wide range of things so um what sort of um jobs could you have got with that degree i'll say you've got your jobs now but what sort of other jobs could you have done with that i think you can be a teacher you okay. can you can you can uh do lecturing stuff you can be a strength and conditioning coach you can be a uh, data analyst you can be a, maybe a, a psychologist as well but my field was really coaching so i i wanted to get knowledge from other fields to be a better coach not because i wanted to to become a data analyst or strength and conditioning coach, but I only wanted to know how data analysts like uh, function, how uh, uh, psychology operates, and then to be a better uh, coach. Um, um, after that, you came to you came to England for Sterling. Um so what was the reason for, I mean, presumably in the Czech Republic, there wasn't any 
sort of specific degree that he wanted to do here. So I'm assuming that's why he came over. So it was because I wanted to get maybe the experience from abroad. Okay. So I wanted some international experience, but also during the time I started to to study at the University of Central Lancashire, I combine my my playing career with with study. So I played there like uh, the National League for AFC file. So the reason I came to England was because I wanted to combine my playing career with studying. And then I came to England to Solent because I needed to stop my playing career and I had my bachelor degree already. So I went to, to Solent to study master degree and because I obtained uh, the scholarship, it was easier to choose Solent University. And during that time at the Solent, I started to coach at the Academy of Portsmouth FC. Yes. So it was a really nice combination. And I am really glad for the experience I gained at Solent and also at Portsmouth because uh, the COVID stopped my, my time at England because I used uh, I used the challenge at the Czech Republic because I I get the offer from like the reserve team of one of professional uh, of one of the professional club in the Czech Republic so it was a big challenge for me to come back and who knows uh, what happened if the COVID wasn't there but you know. <laughs> So um, how did you handle, especially in the early career of playing, how did you handle playing your sport and your studies? Because obviously that, that, they, they don't always go hand in hand. So how did you manage to do that? At some point it was difficult because you need to handle two things. But I think that when I was older and older, it was easier because when you play and study, it's maybe more difficult, but when you start to coach and study, then it's good because it's a nice combination and you can do both things, I think, at the same time. But, you know, at some point it's difficult, but I, I'm really glad that I could combine those, those, those things because, um, during those times, it was difficult, but now I think it's it's good. And what sort of degree did you uh, get in a master's here? What was the degree in? Uh, it was the master, like the uh, sport coaching and uh, sport coaching and um, called the course was called um <laughs> somewhere in the other sport coaching i think oh. or yeah that, that's I have it. Um, if you pop something in the one later just tell <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it'll pop up so um going back a bit to your playing career and then we're going to be on to your coaching career so you started off in 2014 this is your senior career so you did uh, under age and the amount of sin. So for two years you were at FK Dakra Prague, which I'm assuming is a lower league team, is it? When you started. So Dukla Prague is the f like uh, played in the highest league in the Czech Republic at the moment. Uh, at that moment. So I was raised by Dukla Prague and Slavia Prague. So there are two clubs uh, like in the Czech Republic, Slavia Prague and Sparta Prague, and then Dukla Prague, which is also in the, in the, in the, in the highest league. But uh, I was there like in like the first team, but I didn't really get a chance there. So uh, during that time, I started to, to study at the university as well. In, in Prague. So I went like to not 
non-league football, but like semi-professional football. It's like something like in England, like the uh, League One yeah. or League Two teams, those kind of teams. So it was a semi-professional football and it was easier for me to combine like my studies with with football. And during that time, I I, I uh, thought about about becoming a professional footballer because I uh, I think that um, I think that I get ex more and more experience in that in that league, and mm -hmm. then I, I I got offer from like mm -hmm. more like professional clubs in the Czech Republic, but I chose to go to England. So yeah. I went to combine like my studies at the University of Central Lancashire with AFC Fylde, which was quite uh, quite challengeful. And yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it kind of made sense what you said because you went out on loan to SK um, Amelia Park and then you went on the, uh, on a professional uh, on, a, on a permanent deal and yeah. then you came to England um, yeah. and then you played for IFC Floyd, which obviously yeah. is an non league team when yeah. you're up in um, the Lancaster University. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you had an offer from Cardiff uh, Med, didn't you? And then um, you didn't end up going, you went to Lancaster City, but um, you found out that you had some sort of um, disease or disability when you yeah, had that Cardiff um, approach? Yeah, so I had some health problems which caused that I needed to stop my playing career for longer period. So about like one and a half year because that uh, disease like uh, affected my immune system so it was difficult to really do something like uh, on a physical basis and i needed to be on a strict diet but after that i was all okay but one and a half year during that time was was the period that i really think about my future and i realized that maybe uh the way i went like to combine my coaching career with, with studying was the, the right one. And now I know that it was maybe the right one. Uh, you never know what happened if, if I chose to, to become only a, a professional footballer. Yeah. Maybe, maybe now I was, I don't know, in League One club or League Two club, not in a pro like really professional football, but like in, the, in those high profile clubs but but now i i'm where i am and i'm really happy for that because uh it's one of the uh, one of the one of the way you can go and i chose that one and yeah yeah do you mind explaining what the disease was because i can't really pronounce it myself here and it, you know it was the immune system the mono, mono crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you just get that out of nowhere, or was it? Um. Um. It. It. It is. Uh. A kind of illness, you know. So it's like a virus. Okay. So. Yeah. I. Yeah. I don't know where I get the one. That one, but. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh it's kind of uh, of virus and uh i needed to to stop uh, yeah. all of the activities and yeah yeah I mean, it must have helped that period of time although it was a very scary time for you but um it sort of made you think about well i definitely want to go in this coaching path so that probably helped as well yeah uh it was if it, it was difficult but you know, I think that it was better to realize that at I don't know 22 years when I was 22 years old, 
uh, rather than realize it at 35 years old when I, I, I am 35 years old because you know I think it's easier to go other way but when you are older then sometimes you think that the professional football is the only way to go and then you are maybe finished <laughs> so you don't know where to go from that point but yeah i'm happy that it's it's over and like you know yeah. what you want to do but in in my mind there's still what happened if this disease didn't come or if i was a footballer and like you so so it's in your mind but but now i'm really happy for my for my journey and like for my for my career so far and, and, and um so you went to lancaster city obviously at uni and then you went back to Prague for the 2018 so why did you decide to go back for a season so it was because i needed to finish my bachelor degree oh okay so i needed to finish my bachelor degree and uh it was only like for uh, one season so i i knew that i wanted to come back to england after i finished my bachelor degree and i started like to think about like universities where i can go after 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 that year so that's why i was in a communication with the cardiff met university and and i thought that this university could fit my journey because you can combine like the like quality football with the university program so but because of this disease it didn't happen and i came to solent university yeah and so you came to uni you did your master was it a two-year program wasn't it your master's two years one, one year uh, it was one and a half year program one and a half yeah and during that time you um would it be fair to say that you you retired from football in 2019 would that be a fair assessment yeah yeah because then at that point you went on to be a uh, part of the academy in first of all in preston preston north, north east end or well it's so obviously a championship club you know you must have felt um pretty pleased that you managed to get that sort of high level of football club and to coach the academies that have now probably grown up to the senior team. Yeah. Yeah. I went there because uh, I obtained my UFA B, li B license as well. So oh, wow. it's kind of like the UFA license you need to have when you want to become a coach. So, uh, so that was that was the time i i started to really combine my like playing career with coaching and with studying at the university so uh mm -hmm. i tried there more like things like during the time at the academy so uh, i i worked with with data analysts I worked with uh, strengths and conditioning coaches. I worked with like academic coaches to like to get the knowledge, try to get the knowledge from them. them. And uh, it was more like a, like a, a experience kind of thing, like when, when you are at the uni. But then after that, when I went to Portsmouth I was I was already a coach in the academy so it was a really nice step forward for me and yeah that's it yeah and uh, it must have felt a bit 
weird going to Southampton when you were at Southampton in Solent. You know, there must have been a bit a bit, a bit of rivalry with uh, the um, host players. Like, what are you doing going to Portsmouth? You know, obviously they're bigger rivals. So that must have been quite a tricky balance. <laughs> yeah. 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 I went there because of Chris Neville. Oh, what? Right. He, he's a lecturer at the Solent University. And... So uh, we had a wonderful, or we have a wonderful relationship with Chris. And um, I went to Portsmouth with, with him, like in the summer of, I think, 2020 or 2019. And uh, we went to Portsmouth to have a chat with the academy, like the academy manager and head of coaching. And I met there, like Sean O'Driscoll like a wonderful person and like a really uh, big professional and like the former manager of like most of the championship clubs and uh, we had a chat and then uh, after that chat and like after we we uh, we see some some training sessions of the academy then I uh, get the uh, get the uh, offer from that academy. Should say that Chris Neville is of no relation to Phil and Gary Neville. There's no relation that whatsoever. So just let the people know that there's no relation. Um, yeah, and then you had a very positive. I kept seeing on Facebook pictures of the academy. You know, the academy you with the post of logo. You were on the pitch and everything. So that was all very, very exciting for you. And then uh, COVID happened, and you went back to Prague to the Czech Republic, um, and then you worked with a B team, didn't you, at a yeah. club? So yeah. which club was that? And I'm assuming the B team is uh, a youth team, under 21s, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, it's like under 21s, and it's a, a reserve team of one of the professional clubs, like FK Victoria Zizhkov. It's a traditional Czech club uh, and for me it was a big challenge because you uh, you work with like adults and I think that it really suited like uh, to what I wanted to to really do uh, and yeah it was a really big challenge and like uh, I, I I get a really uh, great experience from that time because you know I think that I think that when you get the experience from various environments and various players and various level of play, then it really helps you to become a better coach because it's not only about like how you operate with elite athletes but it's also about how you operate with grassroots players or, or students at the primary schools where you really learn how to like do basic things. So sometimes some, some people have only like the uh, opportunity to, to work with like elite athletes and some of them have only opportunity to, to, to operate with, with uh, non-league players or like students and I think when you have both then it's it's uh, better for your like or greater knowledge and like maybe greater experience so I'm happy for that that I, I can combine elite football with grassroots football as well and then you um, so how did it work with obviously 2020, you went there. Um, obviously, COVID happened. How, I mean, what were the training sessions like? Presumably, they were quite different to how you would normally coach. I mean, I don't know what happened over there, but I know, hey, yeah, we were in a lockdown. We had social distancing and all that in place. Uh, what was it like for you in a typical, typical? It was difficult because there were lockdowns, then you could maybe train in some groups then you could only like do some like zoom sessions 
then you are you were again in the lockdown and then you could play like the season so there was a lot of changes during that time so it was difficult to really think about coaching point of view it was more about how to operate how to handle things and like yeah so i am again happy that this is maybe over and but but yeah it was it was that area or and like uh, that the time that was difficult for everybody yeah yeah and uh you left that after a year and you, uh, you're now an under 19s uh, coach. Who's that for? So it's in, in my hometown. Okay. So I combine like the coaching point of view, like with under 19s, with like the uh, position of a sport director. So, so it's a it's a really good for, combination for me because because we really do football from the base so we try to to promote but with that we want to like uh we 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 want to advance our academy we want to advance our facilities and we know that we will be in that level when everything is in that level not only the first team but also like the youth teams and like the facilities so um the good thing is that that there are really the three c's like the capital competence and like the uh the concept and i know that that it's a maybe different kind of operation than when you are in a really elite football but you know those clubs in england like the bournemouth and like those kind of clubs it's a really similar to that clubs that you go from really maybe nowhere to somewhere and for me this is where i can maybe learn as well like new things and i, I go into challenges that maybe this kind of football really uh, uh really um yeah yeah um and so how did you get from into the uh under 19 coach how did you get into your role as a sporting director how did that come about um it's like the combination of those two things so it's like uh i'm happy for that combination because it's not only about coaching but it's also about maybe uh like operational kind of things like to to think about how to how to uh how to move this these uh, kind of things forward how to move like the facilities for, forward how to how to move like uh, this uh, or like how to move first team forward and like yeah so those kind of uh, those kind of things which i think helps you in your future career like when you are in uh, maybe first team management and this kind of things because uh it's not only about coaching but it's also about like how you operate and how you offer your like personality how you show your personality how you show your abilities with some like problems and troubles so when you joined the club you got offered the coaching position and the sporting director position together so um how, so how did you get into that sport and director role because you, obviously you're known as a coach that's your first so how did you get into the sport and director you, did you have experience before and then you said i can be your sport and director how did you get into that role yeah i think it's because like of, of some skills 
but also because like the like the owners like trust me and like they, they want to move the club forward so they 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 want me like to do like the sport and like football kind of things and they will do like the other kind of things so yeah i think it's about trust and about maybe skills and like the personality so those kind of things maybe help me like to get this kind of position yeah and you went forward with that sport and directing role and and you're now as you mentioned before uh earlier that you're part of the fa of the czech republic um in what job is that again it's a youth coach like i'm a youth coach at the football association and in that role i help like clubs with like the training sessions i help like primary secondary and like also like universities with some like lecturing stuff uh we also lecture at like the uh, like the uh, ufr licenses so it's a multi direction like uh, role so th- we we do more more things like in in football so yeah it's about like the lecturing and coaching stuff um you mentioned you got your you efi license is that pro two and so i've got like the ufr a license now oh. so uh I want to to go at the UFA Pro license in the future, so it's the like the professional UFA license. But now I'm happy with, with the UFA license. But when there will be a possibility to 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 go for the UFA Pro, uh, I'm ready for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know what that license is, but uh, some people watching may not know what it is or listen to this. Um, so that with that license. You can you can manage a top league team, but you can't manage at a championship league level. Yeah, yeah. You can't Europa League. You you can't be a, a like a football manager in a Premier League or Championship, but you can be a manager in National League or I, I don't know if in, in League Two or League One, but mostly like managers in League Two or League One have the UEFA Pro license but sometimes they they don't have it but i think that in a semi professional football you can be a, a manager and like in a professional football you can be an assistant manager or like the the first team coach with the ufi license yeah but one of the b license only goes up to a certain level and then you know because i heard a story a few years ago of a of a manager who got their team into the Championship League playoffs sort of position, and they found out that he can he can manage them in the Champions League because he didn't have he didn't have the right uh, the, the right license to be able to play the Championship League level. Yeah. Um. Obviously, that's a different license. So the A license you can manage at any level in in their league and European Championships. Yeah. So what's the next license? What's the one that you probably want to do in the future? What does that cover? Does that cover everywhere? Or... So so with, with my license, like it's the UFA A. And after that, it's only like the UFA Pro license. Okay. And it's like the the license for the like professional football managers. Oh, I see. So who operates like in Premier League Championship or in the Champions League, Europa League, and like in the highest leagues, uh, whatever. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Um, and in your playing career and your uh, uh, your youth, did you get any offers from like big clubs or you know any clubs that you've turned down? Obviously, we've mentioned Cardiff. Uh, 
Mediterranean. Was there any other clubs that approached you that you yes. turned down? Yeah, I had the opportunity to go like to the uh, first leagues or second league clubs in the Czech Republic when I played in the Czech Republic. And then uh, I had the opportunity to, to go to AFC File, which was like the uh, non-league club. But like it's the national league, it's like after League Two. So the AFC file um, wanted to promote to League Two, and like they have like great facilities, they have a great stadium, and they had a gr great manager during that time, like Dave Chaliner. He now managed Stockport uh, United or St Stockport County. I don't know how it's called, Stockport United, I think. They are in a uh, league two, I think, and he's a really great manager, and he also inspired me to become a coach because I saw like his personality and like how he operated, and like he's a uh, like from my perspective, he's a great coach and manager. Yeah. Um, so. Now we're going to talk about your future. So um, your future as a player has ended. Um, what are you hoping to do with your coaching career first? You know, where would you, where would you, would you like to end up at a Premier League club? Would you want to be a manager? You know, what's the future for you? So nowadays, I'm really happy that I combine like all those kind of things like I work with elite athletes, I work with semi-professional athletes, I work with grassroots athlete, uh, uh, like footballers, I work with students at the primary schools, at the elementary schools and uh, like at the university. So you meet like various people, you meet various level of their like abilities and you get experience from all those kind of things. But in the future, I see myself like in a in a adult football. So I would like to become a coach. I would like to become a manager. But you don't know where the like journey really will lead you. But yeah, I know that I would like to to become a manager or like the coach in a professional football. Look well, at, at home or board, or does it matter? Oh, home and abroad. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you never know, you might end up coming back and, um, yeah. So imagine if you went up to the Total Public uh, National Team, imagine that, you being their manager or something. Yeah, That's it's cool. it's a dream for everyone, I think, <laughs> to manage, yeah. like, your home country. And, like, your, so I think it's one of the biggest, like challenge you can you can have because because yeah, yeah it's 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 your it's your country and you know you want to 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 hear your like uh, atom you 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 want to to fight for your country so it's a different kind of thing uh, when you are in the club and in your like um in, and when you lead your country so it's a different kind of management different kind of coaching as well but you get a bit of time off as well don't you You get a bit of time off as well doing because you've got national camp and they go back to your club level and you get maybe a holiday in between or something <laughs> <laughs> so um and well and what do you think the future is looking like for Czech Republic football in you know in your home country? What what do, what do you see the future being like for the the clubs and the players within those clubs to maybe go abroad and be successful in their careers? What's the future looking like for your hometowns um, football association and the things uh, things are looking for the future for the I think I, I think we were really good like in 2005, 2006, 2004, 96, 97 during those times. 
then we had like a really like big rest like in between and now we try to move forward again so i think uh we are better than we were like 10 years ago but uh we are far away from where we were in 2005 and 2006 but we have players like in Bundesliga, Premier League, and as well like Tomasz Sochek, Vladimir Sofal in West Ham, and like other other clubs and other players. Uh, we have a really good team nowadays, SK Slavia Prague, which plays in Champions League, Europa League, and like uh, then Sparta Prague and Viktor Pilsen. So those three clubs are really like compet then the rest of the league is like not really not really competitive like in when you, when you compare it with premier league but it's like kind of thing like a championship maybe or like league one mm. in 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 england but those three clubs are really competitive and they can play with like teams like everton like with teams like uh, valencia and like those kind of things in Champions League and like Europa League. And our national team is, I think, competitive again. And like, we want to move our football forward. And I think that in some years, we can be like in, in a better place than we are, we are uh, at the moment. Um, and with your role in the FA, uh, Football Association, um you're hoping to get more younger students that are going into schools to be footballers men and uh, boys and girls i'm assuming and you know you're hoping to get more people involved in football yeah 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 so um, we are doing there like the football sports. as well like from the base so we want them to we maybe like influence like players, we influence students and we, we uh, influence coaches and like the management in those clubs, like from the base that we want to move forward, like in all of those like kind of things like in football, but also in education, but also in like, um, in like operation. So, mm -hmm. Uh, it's about influence and it's about like doing the right things like in football. So yeah, it, for me, it's a good combination with like the club role and with like the project role, like in schools. So uh, f for me, it is good because I can learn from everyone, but also I can like inspire them from my position so yeah i think those those things really like influence your career as well as you influence others yeah. so yeah. that's why i like uh, those those roles at the moment yeah well that's everything do you have anything else that you want to add <laughs> not not really <laughs> i think that we we spoke about everything yeah, well, I think so too. But yeah, uh, John, cuss out, remember my name, and we'll see you in the national papers in the future. <laughs> I hope we will have other interviews in the future. Yeah, I'm when sure. you are a sport broadcaster in uh, Sky Sport. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll just stop recording now. But yeah. thank, thank you for coming. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. Voice. Let's go. Voice FM.